how to make the eBay listing process easier. That's what we're talking about today, so stay tuned. Do you want more great content from me? Check out the description box down below. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking you through how you can make the eBay listing process easier and maybe even a little bit quicker for yourself and obviously for your motivation. So essentially we know with eBay, you know, some weeks are brilliant, we feel superhuman, we end up getting a lot of listings done, uh, things seem to just go right in the week, you know, we don't generally have too many problems, or if problems arise, we seem to be able to deal with them in a snap of the fingers, and it just seems to be uh, like everything's going our way kind of thing. But then on the flip side to that, we may have weeks where we're feeling quite unmotivated, maybe we're feeling a little bit lazy or sluggish, or we've not got the energy, and essentially at the end of the week, we've not not got that much done, we don't feel like we've done right by ourselves or done right by our businesses and it, it just doesn't feel great. So essentially, how can we use a few different tips to obviously um, enhance our motivation and make the eBay listing process a little bit easier and more streamlined to then help ourselves in the times that we're feeling motivated all the times that we're feeling unmotivated to get the maximum amount of work we can done. So essentially the first thing I'm going to talk about is actually doing a running total. So this is a real big motivator for me and especially over the past three or four months it's definitely been a huge part of my motivation with listing. And essentially what I do is I just drop the sale price down for each individual listing that I do and then at the end of the day I total the sale price up purely for my motivation and think to myself right I've done £400 worth of listing today in sale price. Now you can obviously tot up the net profit, you could work out the net profit for each individual item if it were to sell of course and then you could do it on a net profit basis if you want to do it that way but I just do it in, in a turnover basis because it's quicker to do that calculation obviously and to jot those uh, numbers down and also it's quite motivating to do that as well so essentially I can just say to myself right I've, I've listed £400 worth of items today, £500 worth of items or whatever and essentially you could roll that over to the week so you could say to yourself right I'm going to jot down every day when I do my listings I'm going to jot down the values and then at the end of the week I'm going to do an overall calculation and I can say to myself oh this week I've listed £2,000 worth of items which is incredible I'm really, really happy about that. You can obviously pat yourself on the back and say to yourself, I'm really, you know, I'm really happy with that. I'm really pleased with the, the progress. And then you can obviously repeat the process the following week. You could maybe even do it for an entire month if you want to, but I think that might be a little bit over of an overstretch, really. But certainly doing it for a day or a week is brilliant. And I found that quite uh, motivating. So that is definitely a big one. Actually doing a running total on a daily basis or a weekly basis, something like that. So number two is uh, something I've kind of already done a video on, so I won't touch on too much uh, with this one, but essentially I put a card up somewhere um, with the video I actually did, and, and the video I did was actually how to create a listing template. Now, obviously, listing templates are brilliant because if you've got similar items, essentially what an eBay te uh, listing template is, um, it's basically a sort of semi-pre-filled listing form that you've previously done, that you've previ previously set up, so then when you come to list a maybe a, a similar item, so let's say you've got 10 very, very similar items, you can then basically list them really, really fast using this template that you've kind of pre-filled in. Uh, maybe it's got the set price in there, maybe it's already got the postage price set in there, maybe it's got part of the description set in there, the item specifics, all the rest of it. So then it makes your, your listing a lot more streamlined. So obviously using uh, listing templates to sell similar items is obviously another way that can streamline the process and ultimately make it an easier process on yourself as well. Now, number three is listing similar items. So this very much ties in to the previous one that I mentioned, which is obviously doing listing templates. Now, of course, you don't have to do, um, you know, you don't have to sell similar items and use listing templates, but just generally you, uh, selling similar items, uh, maybe in one go, in some sort of batch. So you maybe do, for example, let's just say uh, you, you've got a large amount of action figures. Let's say you've got a large amount of Star Wars 
those action figures. You then do all the photos of them and then you do all the, um, obviously you do all the listing in one sitting and it just streamlines the process because if you've got, for example, you've got um, a piece of pottery and then you've got a piece of brass and then you've got a load of action figures and then you've got, um, I don't know, a couple of pieces of clothing. When you're doing the photography, and when you go through to actually list those items, it's not going to feel very streamlined. It's not going to really feel like it's a flow. It's going to kind of feel a little bit like sort of jarring with the way you're listing. You're not going to feel like you're going to get into much of a flow. So essentially, if you obviously choose to list similar items, both for photography and the listing process, it's going to feel much more of a flow. It's going to feel like um, you can just sort of smooth through this. You can, you can just get through this very, very easily. You feel like you can list a lot more, which is brilliant because that means obviously you may be more encouraged to go on in your listing, uh, you know, your listing session, whenever that may be in the day. You may feel like you can photograph more and then do a second wave of listings as well if you are obviously photographing and listing similar items. So using listing templates and also uh, selling similar items are a brilliant way to obviously increase your motivation and increase the speed in which you are listing. So number four is one that there's a little bit of push and pull on uh, in the community. This is obviously in the reselling community. Um, some people love it. Some people say it kind of distracts them a little bit, which is either listening to a podcast or listening to music while you are listening. Now, for me personally, listening to music, I've kind of tried that quite a lot and it does kind of distract me a little bit more. But what I've found is, although listening to music does quite a lot distract me actually when I'm listening, listening to a podcast doesn't distract me as much. Uh, I don't know why, I think maybe listening to music, the types of music I listen to are very um, uh, sort of big, in your face. I listen to a lot of trap. I listen to a lot of sort of EDM and things like that. So they are quite kind of in your face music styles. Um, if I was maybe listening to, uh, you know, slightly maybe more orchestral things like that, then obviously it might be a different story. But essentially, um, when I'm listening to a podcast, I feel that that distracts me a lot less. And I've actually realized that my productivity does increase when I'm listening to a podcast, especially if I'm using it in conjunction with a few of the other things I've talked about, as in doing a running total and obviously using a listing template as well. So you can actually use these things in conjunction with each other. The, the best thing that I've found for my entire listing flow at the moment is doing a running total, listening to a Doctor Who themed podcast, because as you will be all aware, I love Doctor Who. So listening to a Doctor Who themed podcast and also using the listing template or doing a running total, whichever one. I can't remember which one I just said, but essentially running total podcast and uh, doing the listing templates, those three in conjunction with each other really, really do help me uh, get motivated at the moment and I can just fly through the listings using those three. So yeah, you can obviously use them in conjunction with each other if you so wish. So essentially for some people, the whole podcast music thing, it isn't going to be for them. It's not going to be a part of their personality. They might not want to... Uh, it might just distract them too much, you know, their personality type might be um, the fact that maybe they, they need to listen to music um, on its own rather than obviously while they're doing something else. And I do find that with music specifically. So it just depends with that one. It might motivate you, it might not, it might be a hindrance, it might be a help. It, it really just depends. You've just got to kind of try it out and see what works best for you and see if it is something that you want to obviously put into the equation. So with that being said, I will get on to the final one. So number five is list what you enjoy dealing with. So essentially, uh, for example, maybe you love, you're a big, big lover of Star Wars. So obviously if you buy Star Wars figures or you buy Star Wars books or Star Wars novels or whatever it may be, it really doesn't matter. There's so much Star Wars merchandise out there to sell. Uh, whatever it may be, you start selling Star Wars stuff and you're absolutely, you're falling in love with it. It's brilliant because obviously you love Star Star Wars anyway and now you get to sell it. Um, this is a big one for actually helping you but also I wanted to cover the ways it can be a hindrance as well but before we do that I wanted to talk a little bit about actually how it can help you. So essentially because you love it it's going to be so so easy to list. It's going to be 
so so easy to photograph so easy to list and also a bigger thing is actually research because a lot of people who might not be familiar uh, with Star Wars they won't know some of the character names on the figures that you that you would would know that you've actually picked up you could obviously uh, look at a job lot of figures and know instantly all the different names of the uh, characters in that bundle someone else wouldn't be able to do that and they would have a lot harder time actually processing and listing them so obviously from a processing standpoint and from a research standpoint it's going to be so much easier for yourself to obviously list those process them and research them because you know all about them anyway so that is a massive massive plus and obviously as i mentioned photography and listing them is going to be brilliant photographing in particular i think that um if you do enjoy just being around a certain uh, niche or a certain uh, certain item basically when you're photographing them you take a lot more care and you feel um you feel a sense of reward from that that maybe you don't feel as much reward from things maybe you're not as passionate about when you're photographing them so photography and actually listing is going to be so so much more streamlined and so easier to do as well but now I just wanted to quickly touch on a few of the hindrances with selling what you love. Now, there's of course the obvious one, which is you may be quite tempted to keep the items yourself, which is a huge hindrance because if you're keeping it yourself, how do you expect to sell it? So obviously you've got to be, if you are selling the things you, you love, you've got to be disciplined. You've got to be sort of a little bit strict with yourself and say, no, I'm selling this. Maybe even give yourself a set of rules, like say to yourself, you know, once every one month, once every two months, one, once every three months, whatever it may be, the time scale, you know, one of the items that, that comes in, uh, in one of these job lots or whatever that you get, um, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep one of the items and that's going to be my set of rules and that's how I'm going to avoid the temptation to keep everything. Um, or essentially, the other uh, way about it is maybe you could just say to yourself, right, I'm getting these, I'm buying these to sell and that's that, you know, I, I'm doing this as a business, I'm not going to be keeping them, I'm going to be disciplined, they're, as soon as they come in, they're going to get photographed as soon as possible, and then they are on eBay, and that's that, and that's where they stay, as soon as they are on eBay, they're on there to sell, etc. So that's another way you can be strict in that way as well, but essentially the biggest uh, pitfall of selling what you love is the fact you, you'll want to keep it. Now, Another pitfall of this or another hindrance of this uh, that you may come across is you may kind of price a little bit too high with with the items you you know you may feel like your price you know you know the market isn't necessarily charging what you feel they're worth so you end up charging a little bit more and maybe secretly you do have an attachment to that item or you do want to keep that item in some way as well so you end up pricing quite high and then they sit there for a while and they don't end up selling so You've got to be aware of that as well. And that is another pitfall of obviously selling what you love. But getting back to actual topic at hand, um, actually selling what you love overall, if you do if you do have a little bit of discipline with it, can really, really massively help the eBay listing process. And, and it can make it so much easier. It can make it so much more streamlined. Um, obviously, you don't have to do the levels of research that other people have to do, as I mentioned. So, yeah, it's actually a brilliant thing, actually just obviously selling what you love. So, here we are. We are at the end of the video. So, if you do like, if you have what liked watching this video, then please do subscribe. I do a lot of content on this channel surrounding reselling, mainly on eBay and Amazon. But sometimes I do other videos as well on various different platforms that I may be getting involved with from time to time um, and obviously if you did like it please do throw a like down below if you have any comments questions or queries about anything that I've talked about in this video then please again um, obviously throw those down below and don't forget to have a look in the description box at some of the links down there as well and some of the helpful information that you may find in the description box so I will leave it there guys thank you very much for joining me today and I will see you in the next one so I'll see you very soon guys